Welcome to Crossroads. China has been quietly buying up influence at American and European aviation companies. And this has been part of a push both to become a contender in the commercial airline industry, but also to help advance its military planes. Now, just last year, China unveiled its first domestically produced passenger jet. And that development taking place alongside the growing controversies with Boeing right now, well, this could hand the aviation industry to China. Now, you may have seen the recent controversies with Boeing, right? The company is pleading guilty to charges of conspiracy to defraud the United States. And this is over the two 737 MAX crashes from 2018 and 2019. Those were allegedly caused by problems in the flight control software. Now, this was followed by whistleblowers and claims of problems at Boeing factories. I'm sure you've seen some of the stories on this. Now, look, we'll of course see how the cases unfold, but you know, in terms of the global market and competition over which country is going to control the market in the future, the Boeing controversies, they could not have come at a worse time for the United States. Just one year ago, the Chinese Communist Party unveiled its first domestically produced airliner, and it was revealed that it stated an intent, in fact, to compete directly with Boeing and Airbus for what? Well, for control over the commercial airline market. And this is at a time when industries, you know, they were just starting to recover from lockdowns and travel restrictions under COVID because remember, it's airlines and there were travel restrictions. CNN said this, for years, China has been en route to become the world's biggest aviation market, eclipsing the United States. It says the International Air Transport Association predicted it would happen by 2024, this year. But it seems the COVID-19 crisis has fast-tracked the takeover, even sooner than that, in other words. It says as aviation tentatively reboots, Boeing and its European rival Airbus are duking out for the lion's share of the recovery market with their B737 and A320 airplanes, respectively. And it's a dynamic that's con contingent upon Boeing resolving its 737 MAX woes, the thing happening right now with Boeing and the Cords. And noted at the time, again, a year ago, that meanwhile, China has developed and is now at the stage of flight testing a homegrown contender, the COMAC, Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China, C919. And it noted that at a time when many Western carriers have been parking their planes in the desert and deferring or canceling airplane deliveries from manufacturers, COMAC's order book was boosted by the formation in February of OTT Airlines, a new China Eastern Airlines subsidiary. Now also, CCP, you know, influenced media, South China Morning Post, they noted back in 2018 that the Chinese Communist Party's aviation industry is tied in with the communist regime's China 2025 agenda. That's one of the CCP's main economic programs meant specifically to compete with the West, and which is also deeply intertwined with the regime's programs for economic theft and business warfare. And just basically on this, China 2025 is one of two key programs of the CCP that have fueled, well, you know, economic theft, spies, cyber attacks, and everything else. Project 863 in particular was cited as one of the key programs driving the CCP's strategies of cyber attacks to steal intellectual property from the West. Now, for the Chinese Communist Party, what these actually represented, both these programs, not just China, China 2025, but also Project 863, were its agendas to become you know, one of the high-tech leaders of the world. They were looking at next-generation technologies, you know, new materials, medical devices, airliners. They were looking at semiconductors and AI and things along these lines. They were looking at trends in the industry and where things were going to be changing in the future and trying to get ahead of the curve. But they were doing that again, by stealing from the West, by copying, by doing forced technology transfer where businesses, if you go to China, what do they do? Well, they force technology companies to hand over their source codes. They force business leaders to come and you know, reveal things about the company they wouldn't want to reveal otherwise. And using these and other tactics, the CCP learns from and copies these companies and then replicates them in China. 
They also do what they call gray, you know, grade type manufacturing, where they have these operations where they might manufacture one product for the West and you know for the companies, but they'll start up a second factory just to create it for their own industries, and they're creating the same product but with a different label. The Chinese Communist Party has played this game, and it's been one of the main focuses of the CCP. In fact, again, back to China 2025, this has been one of the main economic programs of the Chinese Communist Party. Their hopes of the future of the CCP, the ambitions, notably, of Xi Jinping, the head of the CCP himself. And because it's so important, that means they have the entire backing of the Chinese military, the Chinese state, Chinese investment, CCP subsidies, and everything else. It means that these basically are the front line of the CCP's programs and ambitions, and the front line of what the CCP is aiming to achieve. And so the airline industry being tied with China 2025, in fact, one of the top programs with it, is very serious. And look, interestingly, South China Morning Post tied the China 2025 program to the new COMAX C919 airliner specifically. Here's South China Morning Post back in 2018. They said that when the C919, China's indigenous long-haul airliner, successfully completed its maiden flight in May of 2017, officials were quick to announce that the country was edging closer to clinching the crown jewels of, mo of the modern manufacturing industry, aircraft. And it quotes Kevin Michaels, Managing Director of Aerodynamic Advisory and Aerospace and Aviation Consultancy, stating, quote, China is playing the long game. It's not about the 2020s. China is looking at the next 20, 30, or 40 years. And then it adds this. That ambition explains why the aviation industry was listed as one of the key areas, key 10 areas of focus in the Made in China 2025 industrial plan. In other words, the CCP regards aviation and control of that industry as one of its top 10 areas of priority for its economy. One of the top 10 areas that it believes it can dominate the future, you know, global economy, basically. Again, that's what China 2025 was. And as that was unveiled in 2015 with the aim of lifting the country's industries up the value chain, replacing imports with local products and building global champions capable of taking on Western giants in global markets. Read, of course, Airbus and Boeing. It notes that under the plan, China expects homemade commercial aircraft to supply more than 10% of the domestic market by 2025, while regional jetliners should take a share of about 10 to 20% of the global market by 2025. It notes as well that it also aims for global market shares of 40% and 15% respectively for general purpose planes and helicopters. And look, speaking of China 2025 and economic theft, well, CBS did an investigation to COMAC's new C919 airliner and noted that it looks like it was copied from Western airliners, possibly through forced technology transfer, but also through espionage. They allegedly stole some of it. Here's what CBS had to say on this in September. Uh, this was last year. Watch this. 60% of the plane's components are the result of deals with America's top aerospace companies. China has a lot of different varieties of ways of relieving people of their intellectual property. The price of admission to China's lucrative market is steep. If you want to sell stuff to 1.3 billion people in China, you're going to have to give us the blueprints uh, or for your goods, or you're going to have to go into a joint venture with us where you're going to train our engineers. And this is what we call forced technology transfer. A 2019 CrowdStrike report revealed one major focus of Beijing spycraft, components of the C919. Evidence gathered by U.S. investigators and shared with CBS News shows Chinese intelligence officer Xu Yan Jun used aliases, front companies, and false documents as well as an intense hacking effort. One main target, a GE aviation engineer who specialized in jet engine design. Now look, the airline industry in China, it used to be under the Civil Aviation Administration, which is a state-owned monopoly. But during the country's economic reforms back in the 1980s, the Chinese Communist Party broke up that administration and turned it into several state-owned companies. 
the CCP's control over these companies comes in several forms. Uh, one of the big ones being just ownership of the shares. It's not a communist-run company. The CCP just happens to be one of the main shareholders, right? Now, according to the Center for Strategic and International Studies, the CCP keeps majority shares in 43 of the 58 Chinese airlines, meaning, of course, well, they control them. It notes as well that the CCP also supports the industries through government subsidies, and a lot of other cash comes through support of local governments, so several layers, in fact. Now, as for Comac, the Chinese company that just last year rolled out its commercial airliner, notably with the stated purpose of competing with Boeing and Airbus, the CSIS report notes that it's also a state-owned company, Comac. The CCP controls it, and they also note that Comac is, quote, the sole manufacturer capable of producing larger passenger aircraft in China. And as for the new airliner, in fact, the report says this, the C919 is reported to be less fuel efficient and have a shorter range than similar aircraft. Working in its favor, though, is that the C919, it says, will be noticeably cheaper. The estimated cost of the C919 is around $50 million. That's roughly half the cost of a Boeing 737-800 or Airbus 320. Now, look, those ties to the CCP could actually come back to bite Comac as well. We'll be talking more about this, though, after we get back from a quick break. Experts agree one of the best ways to protect against financial uncertainty is to diversify your portfolio. Learn how physical gold and silver can secure your retirement funds from today's economic challenges with a gold IRA from American Hartford Gold. You can safeguard your wealth with no penalties or taxes when you transfer your current qualifying retirement accounts. Call now and our precious metals specialists will send you a free information kit, no cost or obligation. American Hartford Gold, a trusted industry leader with an a from the Better Business Bureau, has a five-star rating from thousands of happy clients. Whether you are getting physical precious metals in a gold IRA or delivered to your doorstep, we offer only the highest quality gold and silver. For your peace of mind, we also offer a no-fee buyback commitment, a low-price guarantee, along with free shipping and free insurance. So don't wait. Call the number on your screen today and secure your financial future. Welcome back. The Chinese Communist Party is making a huge push to control the skies. Now, they're pushing the way right now very heavily into the aviation industry, both to become a contender in the commercial airline industry and also, maybe even more importantly, to help advance its military planes. Just last year, China unveiled its first domestically produced passenger jet. That's the COMAC, Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China, C919. And this development, as well as the growing controversies with Boeing, could see China taking over the aviation industry globally. And that's their stated purpose. Now, I want to dig deeper on COMAC, the Commercial Airline Corporation of China. They are a Chinese company that just last year again rolled out a commercial airliner to compete with Boeing and Airbus. However, according to a CSIS report, they are state-owned. The CCP controls them. And those ties to the CCP could actually come back to bite Comac as well, because, well, during the Trump administration, you might remember, there was similar controversy around the Aviation Industry Corp of China, AVIC. That's a state-owned conglomerate with more than 100 subsidiaries. And one of the big issues with AVIC is that it was also getting tied in with the Chinese military. AVIC was similarly looking to compete with Boeing and Airbus, in fact. And its connections, notably to the Chinese military, became a big point of concern in the United States and the West in general. This is from October of 2020. Bloomberg said this, China's Boeing wannabe could land in U.S. government crosshairs. And they said that being China's premier military aer aerospace contractor and a pillar of Xi Jinping's strategy to become an industrial superpower are enough by themselves to warrant attention from the United States government. But AVIC builds more than war machines, it says, running a civilian business that makes airliners in private jets. And here's the important part some built with parts made by joint ventures with American companies. 
It says that AVIC is aspiring to be China's Boeing and Airbus. Said Zan Fu Yu, a partner with consultancy Roland Berger in Beijing, focused on aerospace and defense. And he added, "Quote: Aerospace is a capital-intensive industry, and therefore fits with China's state system. AVIC has benefited from such state backing." Now, notes further on that AVIC has joint ventures with some of the top U.S. names in aerospace. A partnership with General Electric Co. makes avionics solutions such as flight recording systems. Another with Honeywell International Inc., which makes flight control hardware and software. And a venture with Textron Inc. makes Cessna business jets. Now, look, these partnerships could potentially make AVIC vulnerable to U.S. attention. They say because they create national security concerns. And they cite this with Oriana Skyla Maestro, a Center Fellow at Stanford University Freeman Spongli Institute for International Studies. It notes that Xi Jinping has said China's civilian companies must cooperate with the military to strengthen its ability to innovate in science, science and technology. Meaning, of course, there's no such thing as a purely civilian major company in China. They have what they call civil-military fusion. Everything can be used for the PLA, the People's Liberation Army. Now, look, here's where things can get really complicated for the Chinese Communist Party, though. Comac is also state-owned under the Chinese Communist Party. It also receives state subsidies, and most importantly, it's also deeply intertwined with the Chinese military. And even more than that, you know, with concerns of the CCP working with Russia on weaponry for the war in Ukraine. The CCP's Comac also has a partnership with Russia's United Aircraft Corp, and that company in Russia they manufacture many of Russia's fighter jets, bombers, and unmanned aerial vehicles. They're a military company. Back in 2017, the CCP's state-run news outlet China Daily announced that Comac formed a joint venture with Russia's United Aircraft Corp. It said the joint venture, known as China-Russia Commercial Aircraft International, would quote mainly be responsible for the research and operation of a wide-body commercial jet co-developed by the two countries. And look, this could also become a serious issue for the CCP and its ambitions for the commercial airline industry, because the United States actually has some leverage on this. Despite all the talk about domestic manufacturing of airliners and stealth jets and everything else. The Chinese Communist Party is not capable of building modern jet engines. It has to get these from other countries. In fact, we're talking more about this though exclusively on EpicTV.com. That's the uncensored streaming platform of the Epic Times. So if you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, X, Rumble, there's a link in the description below that you can click on to get access to the rest of this episode. And not only will you get access to my whole library of shows. You'll also get family-friendly movies, premium investigative reports, and hard-hitting documentaries on the issues that really matter, like the Chinese Communist Party's 100-year plan to defeat the United States, which I expose in my documentary, The Final War. The CCP is one of the biggest threats to the United States, and it's playing the long game against us by infiltrating and subverting the systems that underpin our country. And the CCP's unrestricted war against our country. Is one of the scariest but least understood issues of our time. Now, I spent over a decade investigating the CCP's subversion. Frankly, it's such an important issue that I've dedicated my career to warning people about the threats of the CCP. Now, if you'd like to find out more about what the CCP is plotting against the United States, then watch the final war. You can find the link in the description below, and I'll show you all the trailer before we go exclusively to EpicTV.com for the rest of this episode. I'll see y'all there. The greatest threat facing the United States is the CCP. The Epic Times investigation team had studied the CCP for years, but what we uncovered was yielding evidence beyond our imagination. With Chairman Mao, with the Prime Minister, our talks have been characterized by frankness. The Clinton administration said, "Oh, don't worry about it. This will be a poison pill for China." China's strategic goal is to make sure that the U.S. has four enemies, and one of them must be a terrorist group. We are giving of our life's blood so that the Chinese Communist Party can survive and thrive.